So let's look at the following example that will deal with gaseous law. So suppose two Gaussian spheres are shown on the left. So we have surface sphere A1 and surface sphere A2. Both of these spheres, let's suppose, are three-dimensional. Now, only sphere A1 contains a charge, and this charge happens to be a negative charge. And let's suppose it's given by negative Q, negative uppercase Q. Now, because electric field lines begin on the positive charge and always end at the negative charge, that means our sphere will look something like this. So all our electric field lines will end at this point and they will extend outward as shown. Now let's call this sphere A1 and this sphere A2. So we want to ask the following question. What is the net electric flux through each one of these surfaces, through surface A1 and surface A2. So we essentially want to use Gaussian law, which states that the net electric flux is equal to the closed integral of the dot product E dA, and that is always equal to the ratio of the charge enclosed within our region divided by epsilon naught, our permittivity of free space, which is a constant. So let's begin with sphere A1. Now since sphere A1 contains only one charge and that's given by negative Q, then that means by gaseous law the net flux is equal to the following ratio. The net electric flux is equal to negative Q divided by epsilon naught. And the negative simply means that the electric field lines are going into our sphere as shown. If they were coming out of the sphere, this would have been positive. Now, what about for sphere number or sphere A2? Notice there is no charge inside sphere A2, which basically means that all the electric field lines that will be coming into that sphere will come out of that sphere at the other end as shown. So the net number of lines going in will be zero because those same lines that are going in come out. So the electric flux or the net electric flux through sphere A2 is given to be zero. Now in fact by definition if we don't actually have a charge inside our chosen region as in case A2 there will be no flux because all these electrical field lines going in will come out at the other end. On the other hand if we do have an electric charge within our chosen region and the net or the total charge is negative we're going to have a negative flux. On the other hand, if it's positive, we're going to have a positive net electric flux.